Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're gonna paint a cute little Paris scene, super easy, and just a few steps. So for our first step, you're gonna to wanna to take your largest square brush. So for mine, I'm using a one inch flat brush and an eight by 10 panel canvas, primary colors plus black and white. And the first color we're gonna make is a really pretty teal. So I'm using mostly white, a little bit of blue, And just a tiny bit of yellow. Just a tiny bit of yellow. Not too much. The yellow will make it really green really fast. So make sure you have plenty of blue and white and then just creep in a little bit of yellow. And it's going to give you a really pretty turquoise color. Now I'm just going to start at the top and go side to side like this. And you can even do some choppier brush strokes to create some little pockets where there is no paint. I like to do this because then I can pop in some lighter colors there to make it look almost like clouds, but with a very little effort. So I'm just going to take that down. And then as I get down, you know, I'm running out of paint. I'm just going to let it, I want it to be a little darker at the top and a little lighter towards the bottom in general. So once you have this choppy leaf filled in, like I do here, where we have all these like little empty spaces, which is exactly what we want. I'm just going to take that same brush and grab up more white and then just brush it in where I didn't fill in the paint before. And you can even blend it out into the other paint just a little bit to give it a softer transition. I'm just plugging it in and uh, at the bottom, don't worry about the very bottom. Um, we'll, we'll put some more color in there, but for now, I just want to focus on this movement in the sky. We're going to do a little bit of a different movement in our brush stroke at the very bottom. And then there you go. Now it kind of looks like this beautiful clouded sky. If you want some parts to be darker, just add more of that turquoise color back in. Again, you just have a little bit of yellow and a lot of blue. Still have the white in there, but oops, just grabbed too much yellow on purple on accident. <laughs> but you can always go in and kind of make some parts a little darker again if you feel like it got too light and you lost all of your color in your sky because you want it to have some color. And you want there to be no more empty canvas when you're done. Now for the, the other part, I'm going to come down to the bottom and I want to move my brush from side to side like that in the middle. So I'm just going in the middle and I'm just going to rub from side to side. So it should be at like a, at least a quarter of the way up and then just wiggle from side to side. And then at the bottom, make it like really wide. So I'm pulling out almost all the way, but in the middle, just pull a little bit and then at the top, just barely. So you're gradually pulling out a little further as you come down to the bottom. So it ends up looking like a little bit of a pyramid or something. You can even grab up a little bit of white on your brush and then go through the middle and then just rub back and forth to create just some softer shades. And then hopefully you have a couple shades your little pathway should look a little brighter through the middle and a little darker around the edges. And then that's it. So that's your first step is just getting in those colors, the turk, the teal and the, the white. And then you have that cloudy kind of movement in the sky and then that path movement down below. So you want to put your big brush aside. We're going to go ahead and switch over to our smaller brush. We're just going to go crazy and get our uh, Eiffel Tower in right away. So we're going to go in for step two, which is just going to be placing our Eiffel Tower. And I just got some water on my canvas. Um, Oh, 
All right, so now we're gonna go in and do our second step, which we want to be our tower. So we're gonna take our small square brush. So you want a brush, a square brush. It can be, you know, a little smaller than normal if you're working on a small canvas, but as long as it has like a square top or really any brush will do. I like using a square because we're gonna do little um, like lines and stuff, so that's helpful. And for our tower, we're gonna start with just a purple. So I'm gonna use blue and red mixed together. Now I wanna to go to the canvas right where our path starts right here. And this is where we're gonna put our tower. So what you can do is just do a very simple horizon line with that purple color. Just draw a horizontal line across right where we're gonna make our ground. And then what you want to do is find the middle one third section. So if you divide your canvas into three sections, it doesn't have to be exact, but you want to start your tower in the middle one third. So you have one third, one third, one third or, so, or approximately. <laughs> and then you want the tower to go up pretty high. So we're going to go to the right in the middle of this, these two lines. So if you go in the middle of these two lines, this is where the center of your tower is going to go. So what you can do is you can make a vertical line that goes up really lightly and we can then we can erase some of these lines, but this will just help you keep your tower somewhat centered. And then we want it to go just about an inch or two down from the top. So see, I just made a dotted line really light. And then right, these are going to be the, the outside of the tower. Right in the middle, just go over a little ways from each line. So if I go in about a half inch on each side, like that or so, I'm going to make another, so we just brought in two more points from the outer points. So you're going to make a rainbow that connects those two dots. And then you're going to come up on either side like this coming towards the center. So see how I'm moving it slightly inward. And then once I get about an inch above my rainbow, I can make a horizontal line. And then what I'm gonna do is just keep going up on either side and bending my line in as I go up. So see how it can come in and then just gently bending in towards the center line until it gets really small. And you can always adjust your lines a little bit, but it should be like a gradual wider to smaller. And then right above this line right here, we've made that horizontal line. I want to go up a little ways and make another horizontal line. And then what you can do is from the rainbow line right here, these two lines, you can pull from that dot on a parallel with the outer line right here. And then just pull it up to second horizontal line. So I'm going from the inside of the rainbow and up just like that and then this right here is going to be open so we don't want any paint in the middle you can just take a little bit of water on the tip of your rag like i just took stick the rag in there and then i would just wipe the middle and in the little rainbow shape too you can just wipe that out and one thing that's fun about this sky is you could touch it up i just dripped a little bit on here but that's okay um, you can touch it up pretty easy. If you have any like marks on there, you can just use these teal and white colors to paint over it too. So it's totally fine. So we have a pretty good shape going. <laughs> what you're going to do next is you want to add a little oval at the top. So you have a point at the top. And again, I'm just using the blue and the red and a little square brush. And we're just building this freehand. Kind of just what I like to do. I know some people would just get a 
pre-sketch something and make it all technical and use rulers and stuff, but it's not really what I like to do. So we're going to go in and make a little oval up at the top and then color that in. And then just can darken these lines a little bit. And then what you want to do here is those two horizontal lines we drew, you want to pull them out just a little bit further than the edge of the shape and then pull straight down. And then you can kind of pull a little bit of thickness under. Same thing up here, pull out and then pull straight down. Just a little ways. Pull out a little bit and straight down. You're making like a little shape here. And then you can always pull this, extend these lines up. And then you can make these little X's. So you can do little diagonals on one side of each. So see, I can just make little diagonal lines and then I can go the other way, making an X through them, but it's so loose. The so same thing through here, I can do diagonals and then X's. So now we have like a fun little Paris, little Eiffel Tower thing. <laughs> and again, they're always going to be, when you just do anything freehand like this, just without even a reference, because I'm just going off of, you know, general idea of, the Eiffel, uh, of what that is in my mind. This is where it gets a little more abstract, but that's kind of fun in my opinion. So, you know, take it or leave it, but it is fun. Now with that, I'm still wanting to use that purple. I'm going to use the same brush. And then what I can do on the back here is just kind of pull in some dark shadow colors. Maybe use a little extra red to create a little bit of a warmer color. And I'm just pulling on this bottom area. And I'm pulling right up to the path. So I'm just going side to side. Just to fill in the space. Notice how we have like some purple in there. Super fun. And you can always do more layers on the tower with maybe some different shades of purple. So notice how I added a little more red and it changed the shade. I can go in and do the same texture, re outline. Now that I'm a little more confident about where my lines are going, I can be much, much bolder with them. So I'm just doing the same exact thing, just adding a different shade. I'm 
And we're gonna clean the brush. And then we're gonna go in and add some branches. And I'm gonna use black for that. We wanna get really dark in some parts here. So using the black on the brush, I'm just gonna go from the upper right hand corner first and just wiggle and pull towards the tower. And you can add different shapes. Notice how it looks like a Y. So you wanna create like a Y and then you can pull off other um, lines around those Ys. So I have like one big Y and then two little Ys coming off of it. That's really all you need to think about when you paint a branch. And the idea that the line is typically thicker to thinner, but it can be twisty, it can be wiggly, it can be more straight, however you wanna do it. And you just really light pressure and check and make sure your brush doesn't have way too much Um, shouldn't have way too much paint on the base, like where the metal and the bristles come together, because that's going to make it a little harder to control. And or if you have like a really old, not so awesome brush, that'll also make it a little harder. So Put one coming out of here. You just want to kind of coming out randomly. I'll do it coming out here. And then we'll leave it at that. And then what you can do to get like a little bit bigger brush strokes, you can use like a large round brush or just some larger paintbrush. And then I'm gonna blot in some purple. So I'm still using the red and the blue. And I want it to be kind of dark at first, so I'm not going to add any white. I notice I'm just going to the tip of the branches and making little dabs. So maybe you like that circle-y type shape that you're gonna get from a round brush. Maybe you don't. If you want something that looks a little more choppy, you can use a square. So I'll show you the difference. We, did, we already had a square, so I'll just go back to the one we were using. And it's just a preference thing. Sometimes like people want more of a round brush. This is gonna give you more of a triangle type shape where you're just dabbing the corner and you'll get a little bit more. It's just a little different. Actually kind of just depends on the day, but I like the square one a lot because it gives you these like weird little triangle shapes and I think it looks kind of fun. Yeah, just, it's just, again, it's just whatever you want to see. And I'm, I'm blotting a lot together. So it kind of doesn't really matter as much when you're doing that because it's all just kind of smushing together anyways. Now, just for, just to say, I, um, you can always do more branches after we put the foliage in and you could always just do the foliage. You could do this first and then add branches. So if you haven't even painted yet and you're just watching um, and you do decide to paint, you don't have to always do it the order I do it in. I change it up because there's really no wrong or right, right way. It just is what works best for you or whatever you're in the mood to do that day, whatever makes you feel happier. I say just do what makes you like have fun with it. Whatever is making you have fun with it is the right thing to do. Whatever feels lighter. Because if we're always doing things out of a sense of we the obligation, and that could be in any aspect, um, it's it's a totally different vibe, which I feel isn't as creative based. It's more um, mechanical based. So you're 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 thinking like what's gonna 
be the right thing to do. And if it's coming from that sense of right and wrong, you're usually not in your creative brain. So maybe don't listen to that part of yourself while you're creating. Just kind of go with whatever feels funner, not what makes more sense. So sometimes I have to remind myself that to do things like that. It's the one aspect of, of life where we can, we don't have to really make sense. I'm just going to make it up as we go along. And that's exactly what I'm doing. I've never painted this painting before. All my tutorials are just on the fly. I'm not using references and I'm not, um, I'm just sort of making it up. I do use like inspiration from different ideas and things that I've seen and painted before. Obviously that's impossible to not have some kind of mental reference, but I'm not trying to copy something specifically. I might take an idea and then be like, oh, I'm going to do something kind of like that, but I'm going to do different colors or I'm going to make it a slightly different or whatever. So we're really making this like full of foliage. I like it. It's kind of fun. Now I'm going to clean the brush. We want that to dry a little bit. And while it dries, let's add a little more black to the tower. So I'm going to add a little bit of black to that square brush. And I'm going to pull in just a little bit of black on like some of the hard edges of the tower, like on those little horizontal ledges, maybe just a little bit up on this point and maybe on the like side edges. Just where you want to really enhance the shape a little bit more or like on this little umbrella or a rainbow kind of thing. It is. Just think of this as like a sketch. And then you can do some of that little cross, those little cross brush strokes, those little X's. But maybe not everywhere. Maybe just do it on some parts and then leave some parts without it. Because it will look kind of more interesting that way, maybe. And then I'm going to clean that. And let's add some different shades down on the bottom here. I'm going to use my red with white. But not too much white, like mostly red. And then you can come down here and just start kind of dabbing a little bit of that color, or you can just sweep it in like this. Doesn't really matter. I'm gonna just maybe sweep it in on the bottom. You still want to see the purple, but now I also want to see this color. And then you can take some of that pink into onto the purple in the sky. And I'm letting it be kind of thick, but I don't want to cover my purple all the way. I'm just dabbing like on top of some of it. And I'll probably do less to the parts that are closer to the far right. So it's, this is more like in the center between the edge of the canvas and where the tower is kind of pulling in this medium pink. But you can do some of that dabbing at the bottom, like maybe just to break up the horizon line so it's not so straight looking. I'm going to clean the brush. And then I'm going to add mostly uh, white with a little bit of red. So you're going into like your lightest shade of pink. And this is going to be like closest to the tower. 
where it's pulling in towards the middle. And you can do some towards the top on the bottom. Just kind of come in and tap. You can even sweep like a little bit like that. You can even take that light pink and sweep some through the middle. You can even tap a little bit over the, the tower. I just did a kind of a big one on, not really on purpose, but we're going with it. I often say in my in-person classes, like, we are not robots, so we're all going to have a different expression. Everybody is going to do things a little bit differently. And sometimes it might not feel, you know, quote, perfect, or it might, you might feel like it's not good or whatever. But I would beg to differ and say that, you know, it is um, its own thing, you know, it's not necessarily good or bad it's just what happened and the more you can accept that in the creative process the better because that's what you came here to you're the only one that can kind of come in there and do what you do so you gotta get on board with it even if you don't really understand it or you don't really like the outcome that much but there will just always be that there'll be times you like what you create and there'll be times you don't you can't get around that and then you can add some highlights to the trees with that same light pink. I just cleaned my brush because it had too much paint on it. And I want to be able to get a little bit of thinner lines for this. Just a little bit on the top of the black. Just barely. And so you're just going to the top of those branches. Just barely drag the corner, get a little highlight on it. And obviously all the ideas I share, you can get more and more sophisticated with it. You can put a little highlight on your tower too. So maybe I put a little highlight on the left side. So you just, I'm highlighting the left part of it. So now you have like a little bit more brightness on the tower and I had a little more black on this side. So it's more of the shadow side. And then you have these different shades of pink coming through in your trees and you can always add more different shades. It doesn't just have to be three, but notice how I did the dark purple then I did the medium uh, pink and then I did the light pink. So that's three shades. Now I always um, recommend that as a minimum. But that's never like a cutoff. You could always go more. Just don't go less. Because you go less than that, it can get, it looks kind of, it doesn't look as interesting. So try to get more. And then you can even darken up some of the bottom parts with some black. So I usually kind of come in, maybe I'll do a little bit of black like on the bottom, around the path, Just a little bit. Taking the black in there and darkening it up a little bit in between some of the pink to give it more contrast. And then again, you can always darken up your tower more. You can add more branches. You can do a lot of different things, but I'm just gonna let it go because I don't. I'm just we're just making it super simple and kind of abstract, so where you get the idea of how to make the tower and how you can decorate it with some fun floral stuff. And that's it. So I hope you had fun, maybe you learned a little bit, maybe you liked what you created. So hopefully maybe share, give a like and subscribe to spread, help me spread the joy of painting and thanks a lot for painting with me today and have a beautiful rest of your day. Bye.